Well, I did it. I finally talked to Andy, let me get a motorcycle again. So now we're on the way to pick it up. We're here. Um, this may be a little large for me, but I think I'm gonna. I think I'll be okay with it. Uh, so here, here they are. This pair of them. Well, we only we need one. But, uh, we we thought these would be perfect for throwing on the back of a camper. Especially going to Colorado with little trails, running around, checking out camp spots. So it's the Coleman 196 cc's. Basically, it's a Honda clone engine on it. Stand next to it. This says sold. And that one does not. I think we can haul like five or six of those in here. Yes. The lady goes, who's that for your boy? I said, that one's for me. She's like, you're kidding? I said, no, it's for me. Okay, we just got back from picking up the, the mini bike and I'm gonna do some work on it before I even start. Um, and I've seen some people comment about this on online and stuff about when you get a bike that's pre-assembled and they do them at the store make sure you go through and check all the nuts and bolts and because they put them together they don't know what they're doing they just throw them together as fast as they possibly can and just from picking this one up and putting it in the bed of the truck i'll 100 percent agree with that i'll show you some stuff i've already found here that is uh already kind of needing stuff like the front front wheel up there you see the big gap in here they have not quite got this tightened down far enough. There's quite a bit of space between the two. Main part of it is they put the washer on the outside here. It's supposed to be on the inside of the spacer. Keep it from moving back and forth. That would be a little, a little noisy doing on the road. So I'm going to get that fixed. The headlight. It's loose. They never, never got it tightened down. Same with the fender, this fender's a little loose, not horrible. Rear fender, same thing. It gets loose and wobb wobbles around, the bolts don't even hand tight. So it tells you if those couple of things there are loose, what else is loose? So I'm gonna go through everything and check everything on it before I even put oil or gas in it. But once I get some stuff done, some oil and gas in it, I'll take a video of first startup. Um, this is the Honda clone, so Hopefully it starts just as easy. Okay, I've uh, been working on here. I got some some of the stuff already tightened up. I got the wheel now tightened up. I actually, the one washer they had in there, I don't know if it was supposed to be two in there, one on each side or what. Actually, I had some shims that actually fit better anyway, so I went ahead and used that. So now it's actually tight. Not tight enough, it's on the bearing. It's still got just a hair of free play in it. At least now I actually have some threads sticking out on this side and the wheel won't be wobbling around. While I was doing that, I noticed that the cables where they had them routed on the outside here, you can turn the bike this way, great. This way, uh, not so much. So these cables all have to be taken back off. All this has to be taken back off. I'm going to have to run them down through the inside here so this doesn't happen. And there's not even enough way to get them up and over, no matter how I route it, without routing them down through here. So that's what I'm going to do now, is uh, take off the handles, route all the cables and wires through the fork, and then put it back together. It's already nice, it's not rattling around anymore, the light tightened up, the wheels, so haven't made it to the back fender or anything yet, but I'm going to do this first before I forget about it. And the same thing, since I don't know if this was actually assembled by the people at the store, I'm assuming that it was. Uh, I guess the factory could have wired or ran these cables and stuff. I do not think they do. I think this is the store if you buy it from. So, would have saved me time if they wouldn't have put anything together. I just could have started from scratch.
if you do use an impact on some of this stuff, make sure you're really careful because a lot of the stuff will strip out if you're not careful. Um, some of it is just aluminum. Although I am impressed with the amount of actual steel parts there is on it. Um, so it's actually a little better quality than what you would think, but it's still it's China steel, so. I'm not going to tighten those up yet all the way. Uh, I may want to move it so it's comfortable for my hand to hit the brake before I get it on there. Now my cables go down through there. And now I can hit the stop both directions. So I'm gonna get some zip ties, and zip tie that in place. Same thing talking about them assembling it together wrong. I just found another pretty good mistake here that I'm gonna have to fix. Where the fork attaches here, this washer is really loose. It's because they're supposed to be have the washer on here in the bottom, let me get the camera right. They put that washer on the bottom instead of the other spacer. So there's quite a bit of gap in there, so the whole forks can move up and down rather easy. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that and keep going. Here I set the bike with the front tire hanging off the bed of the pickup. Let's see if I can show you with one hand here what the problem with the forks are. I don't know if that's going to show up or not, but yeah, got to fix it. There. Now the workers are where they need to be. Uh, I will say this, the directions are a little confusing in the book. Uh, but basically they're only going to fit in one direction, so if you actually have a, a tight fit, it's not a lot of play. Now, same thing, don't crank down on any of this stuff. They are using lock nuts, so don't crack them down on it so it can't move. It needs to have some play in it. It's not a lot. There. Now I have no up and down movement in it, but it still turns free to side to side. I've got my cables rerouted here, and I'm hoping you can see all this because of the sun. Now I have my cables routed down through the middle here, zip tied along the frame. Now it turns nice and free both directions, hits the stops. Um, like I said, so now I'm making some progress. But basically on this front up here, what I had to do is the big washer right here, the other big washer right here, a small washer at the bottom, and then it's actually got a fender nut, so it's actually got a washer built into it, and that on the bottom. So hopefully that that'll make sense. Um, any questions, you just comment and ask. I'll respond as soon as I can. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of the back of the truck. 
set it on the ground in the shade get some oil put in it um, check over the back end put some fuel in it I'm probably gonna go ahead and get the uh, throttle stop taken off right now they weld them on the new ones now so you actually have to take and grind it or cut it off um, it's pretty easy I'll go ahead and show you how to do that okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of the throttle stop um, I'll show you what it looks like here in a minute you have to take the air filter off and the box off to get to it everything's pretty simple you don't take too many tools to do anything so far I've used a 17 a 16 Phillips screwdriver an 8 millimeter and a 10 millimeter I have a little crescent wrench out here too otherwise that uh, you need a 13 millimeter and that all could be in the toolkit that it comes with but I'm not gonna even gonna try those Alright, I'm going to get you a close-up now and show you that throttle stop. And what they've got there is where the throttle cable pulls. The screw right here, um, you can see as I twist the throttle, it actually makes contact with that and then stops. So it doesn't let you go any further. Um, on the older engines, you just took and just backed the screw out then you had full throttle. On the new ones, they're actually putting a weld right there at the bottom of it, so you can't do that. So you either have to uh, cut the end of the bolt off, cut your weld off, or drill it out. Um, to me, it looks like they didn't actually do a very good job of welding at the bottom there. I'm going to try to uh, get a screwdriver in there and break their weld. Um, I'm going to try that, and I'll let you know how it goes. But I'm going to set you set you down for a minute because I don't think this is going to be a very good video to watch. I um, hope you'll see what I'm doing. My hands are going to be in the way. But I'll show you the pro progress or, or finished product. And yeah, no more than I put the camera down. I put the screwdriver on it and yeah, the weld just broke instantly. A um, whole lot easier than cutting it. And it's nice too if I ever do sell it to somebody. They have the ability to put the throttle stop back on if you know a smaller kid is getting it. Basically, there's one little bitty black spot on there right there, and that's all it actually uh, welded to. My camera's not going to get that in focus, but basically that weld right there was just not very good, which, like I said, worked good for me. Um, now I'll show you how the throttle moves now. See, now you can see it moves much further. So now I actually get full throttle out of it. Um, this is not getting rid of the governor. The governor will still be on it. Um, I'm not going to get rid of the governor on it. I'd rather have a couple mile an hour slower, but have the engine last for a good time. Looks like it all works good now. I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm going to take the carburetor cover off and make sure I'm actually getting full throttle. The butterfly is opening all the way just to make sure. Um, it does look like that spring right there could be stopping it how far it goes so i'm going to check that i went ahead and added some oil to it did, did that off camera just because it's adding oil people know how to add oil um, so i'm gonna go ahead and put gas in it now and see how many pulls it takes to start these are the best safety ones you can get in my opinion um you don't have you, you gotta push a button in the back but you don't have to do a bunch of pulling levers and pulling nozzles and it's nice too if you mix chainsaw gas you can set those on the bed of your truck and then just pull the chainsaw underneath it push the button and fill your chainsaw up so it's pretty nice since everything's got to be safety now all right so fuel is in and the fuel is on the choke is now on Normally, anytime you get a new piece of equipment, and since I actually have already messed with the throttle, took it all apart and put it back together, relatively I should jack in, jack it up, get the rear tire off the ground so when I start it, if it's wide open throttle, it doesn't take off on me. Um, so I'm just going to, I'm going to hang on for dear life and hopefully it doesn't take <laughs> off running. Hopefully the kill switch works in that case, we don't know yet. Sure you shouldn't be a little safer? It should be fine. <laughs> I won't say it'll be fine because that's... I really need someone to give me some life insurance information. All right, how many pulls do you think? Three. Three pulls. 
Molly, let's not stand directly in front of the machine. Come here, Molly. <laughs> Oh, Was there a break-in period? It's supposed to be. I haven't read the instructions or anything. Um, <laughs> I would definitely take it easy for the first half hour. Um, don't over rev it. Get it nice and hot. And then let it cool off really good. And you do that a couple times. Generally speaking, they're broken in. Uh, they do test run these things in the factory, so maybe that's enough. To Mishka, come here. I'd go easy for a little while first. I'm going to make sure the kill switch works. The kill switch works. sound and then I don't know if he killed it or it died. Mishka, come here. He's been working on it, and so far it's sounding good running up and down the road. Let's see if I can get a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Got a thumbs up. Feels pretty good. It's got good power. It wants to ride little bitty wheelies, <laughs> so that's good. Um, I'm six foot four, 250 pounds. Um, yes, it's a mini bike, but it is a large mini bike, so it, it's actually very comfortable to ride. It actually is. It's really fun. Well, I got it there. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it in my little handy dandy toolbox here. I just reset it. Yeah, that's not a gas tank. It's actually a toolbox. Yeah, it's just a little toolbox. So gas tank's down there. That's a isn't that just neat? Toolbox. And it didn't, well, yeah, it did. 25 miles an hour, distance 0.31 miles. It's a beast. <laughs> it wants to just rip it out of your hands and just spin you on the road. <laughs> Not really. It's 25 miles an hour, perfect. Um, once I got everything fixed that was assembled wrong. But all in all, it's, it's actually a rather comfortably, I mean, comfor comfortable bike for me. Um, I'll see on the video how actually small I, small it looks. But, uh, and the front suspension is nice, so it does help some of the bumps. Um, I haven't taken it off road too much. I've just drove it around in the yard, and that was when I was having running problems. Um, but down the road, it runs great. I just think I'm going to build a little rack so I can put it behind the RV so we can take it with us. And we'll have the four wheeler in the bed of the truck, so this should go on a little rack on the back of the RV. Uh, we'll build a little rack for that. I thought I just may do a little tinkering here and there, nothing major. 